Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Shit is about to hit the big old ninja fan because Ishiki is coming to Konoha Village. Hello my friends and welcome to my review of the latest chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. And it's been about a month since we got the very big official reveal of not only Ishiki, but the fact that Kashin Koji is actually a clone of Jiraiya. And if you were hoping to get a little bit more action seeing these two fighting, then this is going to be the chapter for you. And it's not so much a fight as it is an absolute massacre. You see, despite the fact that Ishiki is not exactly staying in the real estate that he was hoping for in Jigen's body, he's still incredibly powerful to the point where pretty much it looks like the only people who are even going to stand something of a chance against him are going to be both Naruto and and Sasuke. And Kashin Koji is really awesome. He's essentially the younger version of Jiraiya who can utilize a lot of his abilities. I believe even in this chapter he uses some form of sage mode against Ishiki. However, it, it proves infantile. It just does not work against him at all. Yes, that is basically what's going on here. Essentially, Ishiki is just destroying everyone with his crazy abilities. And I mean, Kashin Koji throws everything at him. Every manner of fire style ability is actually thrown at this godlike being and he manages to just sort of scoff it off every single time. I honestly thought that they were going to utilize the power of fire to bring this guy down and show that this is how you're actually going to be able to take down an Otsusuki, but apparently that's not actually the case at all. And, and it makes me realize that eventually if Ishiki does take over Kawaki's body and at the very first chapter of the entire series is any indication he probably will, he is going to be obnoxiously powerful. Powerful, but this was a great display of how overwhelmingly strong he truly was, especially because he can essentially create these like pocket spaces where he hides all of his smaller items and he can sort of summon them at will, which basically means you know he has a massive arsenal of all of these objects and weapons which can pretty much just come from anywhere that he can summon almost instantaneously with his special abilities. And he does this in a number of really cool ways in this chapter. Like most of it is basically just Kashin Koji desperately trying to hit him with big fire techniques and a giant Rasengan, but every single time he manages to either dodge it or utilize his ability to bring these objects into play, like these massive stone pillars, which basically completely crush Kashin Koji, not to mention he even gets some brand new wardrobe, which he instantly just brings in, this really killer looking robe, which makes him look even more like a uh, typical Otsusuki member and a part of that clan, but I also really love the super smug scene where he brings in a glass of wine, drinks it, and then just casually throws it down, breaking the glass. It really shows how high and mighty this character is to do something like this, and uh, it makes him come across as even more just like... I'm not really sure what the word I'm looking for is here, but more snooty than Kaguya. I guess that's the word that I'm actually going for here. He's very high on himself. He realizes that he's this godlike being that no one can touch. And just the fact that he can shrink objects and pull them from anywhere and straight up just has the ability to teleport just about anywhere makes him an incredibly devastating character. So, yeah, Kashin Koji does not win this fight at all and ends up basically just getting completely destroyed. He has a last-ditch move where he tries to summon a massive toad, which not only swallows Kashin Koji, but tries to go after uh, freaking Ishiki, but that doesn't work at all. And it's basically an excuse for him to escape. And I do like this because... I had a feeling he probably wasn't going to win, and to be honest, I didn't want him to win. They really need to establish this villain as someone who's like on an entirely different level, and this chapter did a great job at that, but I also want to see more of Kashin Koji. I want to see more of him in the future, and I want to see him interact with Naruto, because that's just going to be really strange and really freaking awkward, and I have a feeling now that we have this character here who's in this chapter, he's going to play a very important role in the story, possibly in even training these young heroes. That, and of course, there was a lot of the drama in this chapter came from the fact that Ishiki was berating Kashin Koji for the fact that he's merely just a clone, a tool which is being used by Amato, basically trying to take advantage of, like, his emotions, which does not seem to work at all. Kashin is just going for it the entire time, and even Ishiki at the end claims that he's going to be going after Amato for revenge for essentially being used as, like, a heroic ninja tool, but I just don't see it going that way at all. And speaking of Amato, 
What a great character. I just love how he keeps his cool the entire time and the fact that he's basically been bullshitting everybody in Konoha Village. Shikamaru uh, in particular, because apparently that big collar that's around Shikadai's neck that was supposed to explode is actually just a fake. He calls it a decoration. It's actually not going to explode at all. And uh, he was basically just sort of playing all of them like fools. Again, showing that not only is he a technological genius, but he's also sort of like a master manipulator of the mind, so to speak. So I really did like that scene as well. But... Here's the thing. While Ishiki is an incredibly powerful and awesome villain, he's also a typical villain. He likes to monologue, and I don't think that he should have said out loud that he only has, like, a few days to actually find, like, a brand new karma vessel. I think that was really stupid on his part, because, of course, everybody knows what's going to be going on here, and we know that he's eventually going to come to Konoha Village to get Kawaki, because that's going to be his vessel, and he wastes no time in this. As soon as Kashin Koji leaves, he just instantly teleports above Konoha Village, just floating above it just like pain back in the series getting ready to bring all sorts of destruction to the village and this is where naruto and sasuke are going to have to step in now of course boruto wants to help out but the fact of the matter is he's too young he's too inexperienced and there's just no way that he could go up against someone like ishiki despite the fact that he is the main character of the series at this point he's just going to get his little ninja ass handed to him so it's really up to naruto and sasuke and Here's where I think a lot of people are going to be making these big declarations. Do we already have death flags? Could there be the potential that this series could be so bold as to kill off its titular character? Naruto, Sasuke, any of the other important characters from the past of the series? It's kind of hard to say. We do know from the first chapter of Boruto that things are eventually going to go south. A lot of Konoha Village is going to get destroyed in some sort of massive event, but this takes place later on in the show. Like, we, we know that these characters are going to age a little bit and become much older teenagers, and it also begs the question at the beginning, was that really Kawaki, or was it actually Ishiki, who was in control of his body the entire time, and what of Naruto? Was that Momoshiki? Was that Boruto? Were they both working together at some point? Is there going to be some sort of intense rivalry between Momoshiki and Ishiki? There are so many questions of what could potentially happen here, but I have a feeling that we're about to get an even more intense battle with Ishiki in Konoha Village, and I think it'll also be a great excuse to maybe bring in all those classic players from the original series, all of Naruto's friends and comrades, to see what they can actually do against this godlike being. I think it's going to be really awesome to see how all that's going to go down. But again, it ends on a big cliffhanger and again, man, it just sucks that this manga is only coming out once a month because man, I just want to see what's going to happen next week and it's not going to happen. We're just going to have to wait and it's going to have to stew on us. So What's the rundown on this chapter of Boruto Naruto Next Generations? I loved this chapter. Of course, I'm a big fan of action, and this one had all sorts of really great scenes. I loved all the moments with Kashin Koji utilizing different fire style techniques to just constantly engulf Ishiki. Of course, none of it worked. And I loved that big, giant Rasengan moment. It reminded me of classic Jiraiya all the way. I truly did love it. And like I said, I think he uses some form of sage mode. You can actually see, like, the markings under his eyes have actually changed and got a little thicker. Kind of like what would happen with Jiraiya when he was using utilizing those abilities. Maybe it's something else entirely, but they didn't really go into it all that much. I just know that it looked really freaking cool. And Ishiki just commanded such a disturbing and powerful presence in this chapter, especially when he finally got, like, his classic-looking robe and everything. Like, that moment was such a great villain moment for him. He, he just, he's so freaking like intimidating one of the most intimidating villains i've actually seen from the entire series and the fact that they know that the only people who even kind of stand a chance against him is, is naruto and sasuke that lets you know that this guy is serious and they cannot you know like waver they're going to have to bring their entire a game to take this guy down and it's just probably not going to happen i mean especially with the way that the first chapter of the series went. We know that something bad is going to happen to potentially Naruto, and that Kawaki is eventually going to be having the karma put back into his body. Um, but how that's all going to happen remains to be seen. I have a feeling it's just going to involve a lot of really crazy action, and... I'm ready for that. So I loved this chapter. It gives so much more promise for the future of the Boruto manga series. Things could change really big considering that we have a time skip which could be coming up maybe sooner than later. I don't know how much more they're actually going to build this up. We still have a few more Kara members who haven't had like a lot of time to shine. And uh, who knows? Like the entire dynamic of the series could change drastically in the next couple of chapters. But for now, I'm just going to continue to groove on it. I'm truly loving it. So... 
I'm going to give this chapter a 5 out of 5. I loved it. As an action fan, I thought it was great. All the moments with Ishiki were fantastic. Kashin Koji, despite the fact that he couldn't beat him, was still really awesome. And the promise of Naruto and Sasuke getting a big rematch with Ishiki, I think, is going to be really great. Especially now that he's brought... Uh, himself to Konoha Village, I have a feeling they're really going to try and have to, you know, up up their uh, their special abilities and working together to take this guy down. So, yeah, super pumped for all of this. Those are my thoughts on the chapter. I want to get yours. Make sure to sound off in the comment section below and tell me what you want to see from the rest of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. The big upcoming battle, Naruto Sasuke versus Ishiki. Do you think anyone else is going to get involved? Any theories as to what's going to go down? If Kawaki is going to be captured during this event? Maybe later? Let's just talk about this chapter and more. Comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. I'm doing a ton of anime reviews this season, so please make sure to check out the channel and look for all of those. If you are already subscribed, make sure to hit the bell notification icon. It'll let you know when all my videos are released. And of course, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps them out a lot. I would also like to thank all of my patrons who've been checking out my Patreon page. You guys have been doing a fantastic job of kicking some donations my way, giving me some great feedback on the channel and how I can improve things. Not to mention, if you make a donation through my Patreon, I'll review an anime series of your choice. Not to mention, I would love to add your name to this list of amazing people who continue to make this channel better every single day. So there it is, my friends. I'll see you all next time. And as always... Stay damn there, baby.